I can count on two hands the number of people I know or have met personally that have joined the Amish. But this is a question I get a lot of on my site and uh, in my email and even on this relatively young YouTube channel. So I'm going to talk to you about joining the Amish today. What are some of the obstacles to that? Is it possible to do that? Uh, are there certain communities where people do that? Also, did I ever think about joining the Amish myself? I'll tell you about that at the end. So first of all, there, there are a number of obstacles to joining the Amish. And I should first say that the Amish generally do not recruit other people to join them. They're not evangelistic or proselytizing in that way, if that's the right word. So they're not out seeking converts. I mean, the Amish have families of six, eight, ten children, and most of them choose to become Amish. So they don't have any problem uh, with growing their church. It's, it's 99% natural growth. It's not something the Amish are seeking to do to attract outsiders to join them, and there's some reasons for that. One is that the Amish acknowledge and realize that it would be quite difficult for an outsider to join them. You obviously have the cultural and tech technological challenges there and obstacles and differences there between an Amish and a non-Amish lifestyle. This should be pretty obvious. The car, uh, you know, elect public electricity in your home, other forms of technology, the internet, all those things that we non-Amish are comfortable with, used to, dependent on. Those are all things that you're not going to have as an Amish person. So that's an obstacle right off the bat. So the Amish are pretty realistic about that. On the other hand, too, it's, um, you know, there's, there's a big cultural gap. There's a mentality gap between a lot of the outside world and the Amish in certain ways, right? We're very individualistic in the uh, non-Amish world, or at least the non-Amish, you know, traditional American sort of outlook is that way. And so the Amish tend to be more of a communal or community-minded uh, group where the community comes first before the individual. So that right there is its own kind of challenge, kind of a shift in mentality or thinking for someone who enters the Amish from the outside. It fairly often doesn't work out when people do join the Amish. And people, I think, are attracted to the Amish for different reasons. I think uh, sometimes people are living a very busy, hectic life with uh, problems, and sometimes they look at the Amish as an ideal sort of community, maybe a solution to all of the pressures and things they're feeling from their own lives. And that's not what the Amish are for, <laughs> even though some people maybe seek them for that reason. So the Amish don't really recruit. Now, that said, there are certain Amish churches or groups that you may consider to be more open to curious outsiders or open to seekers, as they're called, religious seekers. There are examples of communities that had outsiders join, of course. Uh, there's one in Virginia. There's another one in Maryland, I can think of, that has had a number of non-Amish join. Uh, in the past, there was one in North Carolina that had quite a few non-Amish join, but they eventually the community eventually became something that wasn't Amish. It actually became a more progressive church, uh, I believe a beachy Amish uh, church there. So the idea there was to set up a community which would be easier for outsiders to join. And in the end, the church actually became more, I mean, I don't say more like the outside, but they became not, not an old order Amish church anymore, not a horse and buggy Amish church anymore. So that's another kind of concern of the Amish in some cases is that, you know, an influence of an outsider in coming into the church, someone who doesn't have the same sort of background or mentality, you can imagine that could be potentially disruptive in some cases. But you do see certain communities that are more friendly towards the outsiders in this sense. The New Order Amish are, are a group that have a reputation for being a little bit more uh, even evangelically minded or uh, mission-minded towards outside uh, people. That could be one sort of pathway for some people as to through a New Order church. That said, it's not like they're getting a ton of people joining the New Order Amish uh, either. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, if you don't mind, give it a quick thumbs up, like. I appreciate that. So how do you join the Amish? I'm not going to be able to give you the exact formula and what it would take in each community because Probably that's different in different places because it's not something the Amish deal with that often, right? It's not like every Amish community has uh, you know, a lot of experience with outsiders wanting to join just because it's, it's not that common. But typically the Amish would, generally speaking, expect you to come and live with them for a certain amount of time. Of course, live 
in an Amish manner, live, you know, understand Amish ways, live kind of as an Amish person in the community. Uh, in other words, you know, learning Pennsylvania Dutch, uh, which is the first language of the Amish community and church, uh, you know, learning how to, you know, hitch up a horse and buggy, seeing how you fit into the community. When Amish youth are baptized, they have to take a series of preparation courses where they're prepared for that step. And of course, that would come for that you know, potential joiner at some point. But the first part, I think, is to understand if they could fit and how they would feel living in the community just from a, you know, from a cultural and lifestyle standpoint. I sometimes get messages from people like, uh, hey, so which communities should I join? You know, I'm ready to go. Uh, is this one better than this one? What do I do? Who do I talk to? Where do I sign up? <laughs> it's just almost as if it's like, uh, you know, you just send in a, an application and, you, you know, you could be an Amish person in a week or two, right? And it doesn't work that way. That's a you know, longer term process. And some people might find that that during that time that it's not for them, right? So, you know, I'm not going to give you the playbook of how to join the Amish. You probably would need to talk to the individual Amish community that you are uh, interested in, but uh, you'd expect something, something like that. You know, you have to live as an Amish person uh, first before you can even see if that's something you could uh, do or or feel comfortable being really, because it's not just doing something, it's really about being something uh, else, being a part of something else, being a part of a completely different community, uh, type of community for, for most people. Rich Stevick, who wrote the book, Growing Up Amish, The Rum Spring of Years, estimated that around 300 people had joined the Amish, but about two out of three of those had ended up leaving again. So why do some people fail to join or why do some people join and then end up leaving the Amish again? I think there are several reasons why, and this is what I've gathered over the years from hearing people's stories and, and just seeing, seeing these things play out. One reason may be simply that they joined for the wrong reasons. I believe it was an Amish bishop. I think Rich Stevick quoted this in his book, but it was, he said something like, the people come from the outside and they want to join us and they want to join us for... The wrong reasons because they, maybe they fall in love with one of our young people and they think that's you know they want to join for love and marriage and uh, it's not because they're drawn to our faith and to our uh, the way we live our faith and the way we believe uh, Christian faith should be uh, lived out that kind of strikes at the heart of it if you want to join the Amish just because you think it'll solve all your problems or you know, you think that the Amish live some, you know, green lifestyle in harmony with the earth and you, you, you're into that and you think, you know, I'd love to be a part of that kind of a community, but not understanding really what else is behind uh, the Amish, you know, way, uh, then, you know, you're, you're destined to fail because there's a lot more to it to, than that. And like I said, the Amish are not, you know, a, a solution to personal problems, <laughs> which I think... You know, sadly, I mean, I've gotten some messages from people where, you know, it just they sound like they're in a sad state and they've obviously got personal issues, family issues in their own lives, financial issues in some cases. And, uh, you know, they think joining the Amish is going to solve all that. And it's not. So they need to deal with that, you know, on their own, sort that stuff out. And, you know, it's probably, they're probably not really interested in joining the Amish, I would guess. They're just interested in those problems being solved. You know, I don't want to sound too negative here because there are some people that are genuinely drawn to the Amish. That's another kind of group of seeker that are drawn to the Amish for these, for the faith reasons, right? Because they feel that the way the Amish live a Christian faith is, they feel it best reflects, say, the early church and kind of what Jesus left the apostles to, to, to go and spread spiritual conviction seekers, let's say. So some people join for the wrong reasons. They don't understand that there's a Christian faith that's underneath all this. That's a huge part of all this. And uh, they're joining because they just think uh, it'd be cool to live on a farm and, uh, you know, grow your own food and, you know, be organic and or whatever, live off the grid, you know. So there's that's kind of a lifestyle seeker type. You, you come for that, that's fine, but you, you don't need the Amish for that, right? There's a whole lot of other stuff that comes along with the Amish uh, besides just, you know, living off the grid and having an organic farm. 
Most Amish don't have organic farms to begin with, but that's another topic. Another issue that causes people not to become Amish or to leave the Amish is that they join and then they become disenchanted with the, the Amish. Because, you know, when they looked at these people from the outside, they saw them as some ideal type of people that they're, I don't know, perfect people or this is some kind of a utopia where nothing goes wrong and people don't have problems, people don't have issues. They certainly don't have the same issues we have in the modern world. Right. And they, they come to the Amish and they find out the Amish are people, too. And they have their own problems. There are issues in relationships in the Amish community. There are people have, you know, all the sort of foibles and flaws uh, that are a part of human nature also exist within the Amish. It doesn't mean that the Amish don't try to be good people. And certainly there are many, many good people among the Amish. Uh, but they also have flaws because they're people. And so some people come from outside and they see that and they get, they, they become disenchanted. That, you know, leads to some people leaving. Sometimes people come in and they, you know, they may even try to change the Amish in some direction, right? Uh, you know, you, you guys do everything great, but this one thing you don't do kind of the way that I think you should be doing it. So let me try to improve this group. So that, that doesn't really, you can imagine, work out too well. And you can also see that maybe one of the concerns of the Amish about outsiders joining. So all that said, and I feel like I've just been really negative for a while, but there are cases of non-Amish people joining the Amish. I know a, a several of them, and I've got some friends that were not Amish, and they're Amish now. They joined, um, you know, been Amish for many years. Uh, one of them I can tell you about, one would be a woman named Marlene Miller, Marlene C. Miller. She was a woman, uh, I didn't actually didn't know Marlene super well. I did visit with her one time in her home in Ohio and she actually, I think I did a little interview on the, on the website uh, with her some years ago. Marlene came from a community in Ohio, right near the Holmes County community. And she, you know, grew up not Amish. She was English. She was, I think, a cheerleader, a drum majorette in the marching band in her high school. And she ended up meeting an Amish guy, a young guy in her community, and they, I guess, fell in love, and she ended up joining the Amish. Now, I said, you know, kind of this idea of joining the Amish because you fell in love with someone. Uh, some Amish may not think that's the most ideal way to do it, but, of course, it does happen, and it has happened. And it's happened even in, uh, you know, long-ago history because there are cases of people joining the Amish from, you know, 100, 200, you know, years ago or more. Of course, uh, lifestyle differences were probably a lot less in those times. Anyway, Marlene joined the Amish. She ended up, she stayed Amish all her life. She had a big family. I remember visiting with her, I don't know, it's probably seven or eight years ago. And Marlene was just the most happy and fun and bubbly kind of person. If you met her, you would, you would remember her. Uh, she wrote a book. It was originally called Grace Called Me Home, and then later was uh, reissued uh, as Called to Be Amish. When I did a little uh, Q&A or interview with Marlene on the website, I asked her, I was just kind of curious to get her take, and I asked her a few things. I asked her uh, what aspect of Amish life was the hardest for her to adopt or adapt to. And she said that number one was the language, so learning Pennsylvania Dutch, Pennsylvania German. Number two, she said, was sewing, and number three was farming. Okay, so she came from, I guess, a non-farming household. She said it, it was 1971 before I ever tried harnessing and hitching up our road horse. She sounds like she wasn't a, immediately a, a horse person. So if you read Marlene's book and if you talk to her and, you know, read this, you know, interview I did with her, uh, you know, she maybe joined for, you know, love of a, of a young man, her husband, eventual husband, but uh, she seemed to have a pretty strong conviction in, in her faith as a Christian and uh, being an Amish person in, in the community. I also asked Marlene, what would you advise someone who wants to join the Amish? Marlene said that whether you're Amish or not, you need to repent. Ask Jesus Christ, our Savior, to come and live within your heart. Read the Bible every day and be obedient to his word. Seek a real Bible-believing church. The Lord may want you to become an Amish Christian. Not just anyone can do this. I also asked her if she knew anyone else who had joined the Amish. And she said that, yes, two married families who lived 10 miles from us had joined. And then also another man who was in his 70s wanted to marry an Amish widow. And he joined the Amish faith, married her, and had a wonderful life. Sadly, Marlene passed away last year in 2020. I have a couple of other friends who've done that. I've, I've definitely met a handful of people as I was selling books in different communities who had joined the Amish. I remember at least two or three in Indiana that I met in different communities there. 
In other examples, we had a series of blog posts starting back in 2012 from a woman named Anne whose son had and had joined the Amish, and uh, he ended up uh, living in Minnesota. And she wrote a number of guest posts from the perspective of a mother uh, having a son who had joined the Amish and what that was like, what were some of the special joys of that, what were some of the challenges of that. She went to visit her son and, you know, shared some photos. And, of course, she had some Amish grandchildren there. So that was a nice look into uh, the life of an Amish convert from a different perspective, from the perspective of the mother. So can you join the Amish? Now, I'm not going to pretend to be the expert on joining the Amish, uh, but just from my kind of observation and experience, understanding people over the years and hearing from people over the years, I wouldn't recommend it for everyone. I would I would just say to be really honest about kind of what you're looking for. What are your motivations? Why are you attracted to the Amish? Why do you want to join the Amish? Because like Marlene said, it's not anyone, not just anyone can do this. And that's okay. You know, it's not for it's not for everyone. It's not for most people to become Amish. And the Amish understand that. I mean, you can just look at the vast difference in the culture there, right? Uh, between Amish and non-Amish Americans. If you have a conviction or an interest in the Amish uh, way of Christianity, well, uh, it may be that another church that shares a lot of the same beliefs as the Amish, but is maybe a little bit easier for a non-Amish person to join, like a Mennonite church or a beachy Amish church or something in that family, uh, may be a better fit in that case, because there are churches that share a lot of the same beliefs as the Amish. There are also Anabaptist churches uh, but they also permit you know, vehicles. They have a more modern way of life. So that could be a, a better fit in that case. So I would just say be honest with yourself about why you want to join or why you have this interest in joining the Amish. Because the Amish, you know, it's not, a, it's not an escape plan if there are other issues going on. Um, and uh, it's not that the Amish don't care. It's just that, you know, you have to... Everyone in the Amish community makes their own living. It's not a communist system. It's not like you just go there and get taken care of. I and mean, everyone's expected to work hard and provide for themselves because each Amish home uh, is kind of independent and family is independent in that sense in that they make their own living, although they, of course, help each other uh, in the spirit of Christian mutual aid when needs arise. Okay, but it's not just a place to kind of go and, hey, take care of me, right? And it's also not a place to go kind of try out the lifestyle or because you're into solar power or organic farming or you like uh, horses. You know, that those are not the reasons to want to join the Amish. Definitely visit the Amish and make friends with them and, you know, experience that life. And, you know, you can definitely do that, but you can kind of get those things without becoming a part of a quite vigorous and drastically different church community. One of my Amish friends liked to quote the uh, saying, uh, bloom where you're planted. Uh, I can't, I'm not sure who said that. I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. He kind of had that feeling, well, you know, I'm, he's Amish, you know, this is where I'm, you know, this is where, <laughs> this is where I was planted. I'm sure, you know, he, he could be a part of a different church. I could actually see him living as a non-Amish person in a different alternate reality just based kind of on his interests and he's very learned and, you know, educated person, even though he had an eighth grade education, he's very well read and a uh, sharp guy, right? As a, like a lot of Amish are, but his outlook is uh, bloom where you're planted. And so, uh, you know, that might be, that's not, that's not to say stay in a bad situation. Okay. Uh, so that's not a, an expression I would take to the extreme, but that just gives you a perspective of an Amish person. It's kind of like making the best of it. If you're in a good situation, you make the best of it. Because even among the Amish, you know, the grass is always greener somewhere else. You know, with the Amish, it could be that the Amish church you're a part of, you may see another church that looks more attractive to you because you don't like certain things about your own church. And it looks like that church has got everything figured out. And then, you, you know, you move over here and it's not quite what you expected. And the grass wasn't greener. So did I ever want to join the Amish? I got asked this once or twice on the channel already. And I can say that there was a time when I first met the Amish back in uh, 2004, uh, when uh, I had been selling books in Amish communities already for, I think it'd been probably several weeks, three, four weeks already. And I had, at that point, I was in the Davis County, Indiana community. 
And I remember entertaining that kind of idea for at least for some period of time that it would be, you know, I was just still kind of, uh, I still maybe felt like I was in a movie <laughs> at that stage. I remember when my father first met the Amish or visited my Amish friends in Pennsylvania, uh, he, he described it as feeling like he was on a, like on a movie set or something, you know, like it, a little bit unreal, right? Uh, you know, but in a good sense. So, yeah, I, I kind of briefly had that idea. Well, it would be kind of cool to be a part of this community. Um, but I quickly realized that it wasn't for me. I mean, I, I think I said I like my English creature comforts too much. And uh, even when I go to live with the Amish now, I miss certain things uh, that I take for granted. Uh, I guess I'm too soft <laughs> to do it. But no, it's, it's not about that. But it's uh, it just, you know, it's. It's not for everybody, and that's okay. And um, I had a brief time where it was in of interest to me, but not nothing serious. But that was something I kind of figured out pretty quickly. It's it wouldn't be for me, but I did have a deep interest in the people, and uh, I really came to really like and care for a lot of the people I met uh, in those communities. And so uh, that's one reason I have this channel, I guess. I hope that uh, covered the topic uh, well enough. I uh, hope I wasn't too negative. Because again, there's not a uh, you know there's not a one size fits all uh, you know solution in this uh, thing. So for some people, joining the Amish is the right decision, or that's the or it's a good decision, right? Uh, it, it works out for them, and I know some people you know that are in that boat. So I hope I gave a more or less realistic perspective on this topic because it's just something. Uh, I've written a ton of blog posts on this over the years. Actually, the most commented blog post on the website is uh, a, a post uh, on the topic of joining the Amish. I'm doing two videos per week. You can hit the subscribe button and stay in the loop for those. My name is Eric Westner. I met the Amish through a door-to-door -door book selling job. And so I visited many Amish homes in a good number of communities across the country. And I've visited a lot since then as well. I run the Amish America website. Thanks. I'll see you next time.